Now, so far, we've been using React to show only one page to the browser. And most websites have several pages, a home page, an about page, a contact page, etc. So how do we implement different pages in React? Well, we've already discussed that our React apps are single page applications where only one HTML file is sent down to the browser from the server. So what happens if we want to see different pages like an about page? Well, from the start, if we're in a browser and we make a request to the home page, for example, we make that initial request to the server. And then we get a response, which is the index.html page, and that goes to the browser. Now, React is going to look at this thing right here and say, OK, well, I know you want the home page, so I'm going to load up a home component. So app.js is sitting at the top. That is the root component, and that will always be showing in the browser. But React is going to inject the home component inside app.js so that we see that home component when we go to forward slash home. And this is the React routers doing. Now, any subsequent requests that we make inside this component, say we have a nav bar somewhere and we click a link to go to an about page. How does that work? Well, we make that request, but it doesn't go all the way to the server. Instead, the React router intercept it and it says hey no you don't need to go to the server i know what to do all i'm going to do is serve up the about component and i'm going to inject that into app.js instead so that's what the react router does it stops requests from going to the server and coming back because we only need that index.html file every time so there'd be no point in sending it over and over again Instead, it just injects the component it needs to. So this is the crux of the React router, and it's what we're going to be setting up in this tutorial. All right then, so to demonstrate how to work with the React router, I've created a whole new project. So I've just run npx create React app, and then the name of the project, which is Poketimes. And that, my friends, is a Pokemon reference, nothing more. All right then, so all I've done so far is gone into the index folder, and I've added in a style sheet, which is a link to materialize CSS. So remember to get that, go to materializecss.com. I'll leave the link down below so you can grab that and put it in as well. Okay, so nothing else I've done so far. And we've got all the default files inside the source folder right here. I'm gonna delete a couple of them, like the logo and the app.css and the test file right there. Then I'm going to go into app.js and I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff right here. For now, I'll just get rid of all the stuff inside this div right here and get rid of the references of those two things we deleted at the top. OK, then. So what I'd like to do is demonstrate the React router. Now, to do that, we're going to need a few different pages. So I'm going to very quickly mock up three components, one for about, one for the home page and one for a contact page. And it's just going to be really basic dummy content at the minute. Now, because we've got a few different components, I don't want to create them all directly in this directory right here because very soon it could get out of hand. So instead, I'll create a new folder and I'm going to call this components. And you'll find the bigger your applications become, the more you'll do stuff like this and structure your components in different folders. So we'll just keep all of them inside here for now. And we'll create a new file and call this home js all right then so this is going to be a functional component because we won't be using state so all i need to import is the react library from react like so and then down below i can create this function so i'll say const home is equal to a function and inside that function all we need to do for now is return some jsx so in here, we'll do a div, and this is going to have a class of container. This is a materialized CSS class, and it's going to keep our content within a central column on the page. So we have that surrounding div. Then I'll do an h4, and this is going to have a class name of center to centralize the text. And we'll say this is the home page. All right, so under that, I'll just do a p tag and then some lorem ipsum inside. So I just typed lorem and tab, and that automatically creates a little paragraph for me in VS Code. All right, then, so let's save that and export the function down here. So we'll say export default and then home. All right, so we've done that component now. Let's save it. I'm going to copy all that and I'm going to paste it inside another file that I create called about.js. 
like so. And then I'm going to right click this where it says home and I'm going to go to change all the currencies. So one, two, three and change those to about. So now we have an about component, pretty much the same. We're just changing the text right here in the H4, the name of the function and the thing we export, but everything else can remain the same. So save that and we'll do one more. So new file and we'll call this contact.js and paste that in again, right click and change all the currencies of home to contact like so. All right, so we have three components here and these are the three components that kind of represent our three pages in the application. So if someone goes to forward slash or forward slash home or something, then we want to load in the home component. Forward slash about, we want to load in the about component and forward slash contact for the contact component. So we have all those now, but we need to, first of all, link to them and create some kind of nav bar and then set up the React router. So we'll do the nav bar first of all. I'm going to create another component here, and this is going to be called navbar.js. All right. So again, this component doesn't need state, so we'll just do a functional component here. So react from react, and then underneath that, we'll create this function, const navbar. Set that equal to an arrow function. And inside here, again, we just need to return some JSX. All right, so we'll have our nav as the surrounding element. And this is going to have a class of nav wrapper. Let's spell that correctly. This is a materialized CSS class, and it's going to create some kind of wrapper for a nav for us. I want to give this a background of red. And again, materialized CSS class to color this red. And we're going to say we want this to be darkened by three shades as well. So we have that surrounding nav. Next, I want to do a container inside. So div.container. And then inside that, we'll do an anchor tag with a class of brand hyphen logo. Again, materialize CSS class. And this is basically just so we can have some kind of title in the navigation. So I'm going to take away the href for now. We don't need that. And then inside here, we'll call this website pokey times like so. All right then. So now we want to display our links. So we'll do that in a UL tag. And inside those, we'll do a series of li tags, each containing an anchor tag. So first of all, we'll forward slash to say this is to the root home page. And we'll say home. Then I'm going to press Alt, Shift, and Down to copy that a couple of times onto the next page. The second one is going to be for the About page, and the third one is going to be for the Contact page. And we'll just add in the URLs right here. So forward slash About for that, forward slash Contact for that one right there. Now, I just want to give a class to this URL over here. So class name is equal to right, and that's just going to position the links on the right. Again, materialize CSS. And by the way, if at any point you want to learn more about materialize, I do have a whole playlist on that on this channel. So the link is going to be right down below in this video description. So there we go. Now we just need to export default and then the navbar. So we've created that navbar and I want to import that into the root component right here so we can nest it inside and so it displays on all pages. So I'm going to import the navbar from and it's forward slash dot forward slash to say this component components folder forward slash navbar. So now we can just nest that right in here by saying navbar like so. All right, so if we save this now, we should see that navbar at the top of the screen. There we go, Pokey Times, and we have these three links as well. Again, all of this stuff is because of materialized CSS, just a few different classes, and it looks pretty decent. Okay, so now we want to set up the router so that when we click on one of these things and we go to forward slash about, we actually see the about component, or if we go to forward slash contact, we see the contact component, because right now, even though we're going to these URLs, we're not actually getting the content on the screen. So let's now install the React Router. I'm going to open up a new terminal by clicking this plus icon right here. And I'm going to CD into Pokey Times and then get rid of that. I'm going to say npm install. And we used to have to install two packages for this. But now in the latest version, we just have to install one. And that is called the React Router DOM. So install that. And when it's done, we can cross this back off. So now we've installed that component. So
So now we've installed the React Router DOM and that is the package that allows us to set up the router inside this application. So let us now first of all import it. So I'll import and we're going to import a series of things. So open up your curly braces. The first thing we'll import is the browser router like so. And this is going to be from React Router DOM. Okay, so we're importing that first of all. Now we need to use it inside this application so that we can use routes. So the way we do that is by surrounding our entire application inside the JSX with the browser router tag. So I can do something like this. I can say open up browser router like so and then close it at the very end. So browser router like that. Let's just scoot this in to make it look a bit nicer. And now we can add routes inside this tag. So where do we want our routes to be loaded inside this application? At what point in the template? Well, I think they should be loaded in below the nav bar. So let's enter down. And right here, this is where we can load in our routes. And it's where we set them up as well. So to do that, we need to import something else from here, the route tag. And down here, we'll set these routes up. So open your angle bracket and then we'll set up the first route and we'll say the path is going to be equal to forward slash and then the component that we want to load in for this is going to be the home component. Now at the minute the React router doesn't know what this is so we need to import it into this file so it does know what it is. So we'll say import home from and then it's going to be dot forward slash for the current directory then into the components folder then the home component, if you can spell it. All right, so now we have a route set up for the home component. So we're saying right here, okay, we're setting up the browser router so this application inside can use routes. Then we're saying we want the routes to be loaded in below the nav bar in the template. So grab the component for this route and load it in right here. And we say whenever a user goes to this route, forward slash, then load in that home component at this position. So if we save this now and go to the browser and check out the home page, then we can see we get this content. But also if we go to the about page, we get it. And if we go to the contact page, we get it. Now we don't want that. We want to load up the different routes for that. So let's do those. So I'm going to alt shift and press down to add another couple of routes. And we'll do the about one there and contact here. Then we want the about component. And we want the contact component right here. Again, we need to import these. So let's import contact from dot forward slash components forward slash contact. And then after that, let's import about from dot forward slash components forward slash about. And now we have those two capital A there. All right, save that. And now if we go to forward slash home, we get this. If we go to about, we get home and about. And if we go to contact, we get home and contact. Hmm. So this is strange behavior. Why are we getting the home content on every single URL? Well, the way React works is that it sees that we're still in a subset route of home. If you look up at the URL bar right here, we still have present the forward slash and because it's present, we're saying, okay, well, it's a subset of this, right? If we change this to forward slash home and save that and we go to contact, we don't get that anymore because home is not a part of this URL, okay? But if we go to home, then obviously because it's taking you to forward slash, then we're not seeing anything. So if we changed it inside the nav bar to go to home, save that and clicked it over here, then we're getting this component right here. So it's working now. So the reason we were getting the home component loaded in on the about and contact is because we were saying, okay, look for any route that is just forward slash and then load it in. Now the contact has that just forward slash within it. So it loads it in. You might think this is weird behavior, but this is the default behavior of the React router. So the way we get around that is either doing what we just did by changing the link to home, but you might not want to do that. So we'll change it back to just forward slash there and we'll change this back to just forward slash as well and 
The way we can get around this is by saying, okay, make this an exact match. So the route has to be exact path equal to forward slash. And now because forward slash about is not exact forward slash, then it won't load in the home component for this route as well. So if we save this now and preview this, then we just get contact, we just get about, and we just get the home component. So this is pretty cool, right? We've set this up and we're getting the right components, but there's one hitch here. Notice what happens very quickly on the page when we click on a link. It reloads. We send in a request to the server and you can tell if you look up here, you can see the page reloading, okay? So we don't really want that. We don't need to make a request to the server every time we want to receive back the same index.html file. We want React to intercept that request and say, okay, no need to reload the page, just load in this component and we'll look at how to do that in the next video.